Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be exploring the region known as R136. This fascinating region located in the nearby galaxy of Large Magellanic Cloud is actually really 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 awesome. I'm going to show you today what's there, but most importantly we're going to recreate this in Universe Sandbox and find out what will happen to a planet located in this region. Welcome to What the Math. So Large Magellanic Cloud is uh, one of the nearby galaxies and it actually has one of the coolest and one of the most amazing uh, nebula that you see right here. This is known as the Tarantula Nebula. It's actually created by the emission of light and uh, basically the energy created by uh, something like several hundred really, really powerful stars, one of which I'm actually basically headed toward right now. This is the most massive star in uh, the universe that we've discovered so far, known as R136A1. Now, there's actually quite a lot of stars here. As a matter of fact, uh, here is an actual photo from uh, one of the telescopes from NASA demonstrating to you how many incredibly powerful and incredibly bright stars there are. Every single blue spot in there is a star whose mass is at least 100 masses of the sun. These are ridiculously massive, ridiculously powerful O-type or wolf Rayet stars that are basically one day going to go boom. They're going to go supernova and create black holes. But as of today, none of them still has. And so this region is actually really incredible because it's what's known as a um, star nursery. It's basically where a lot of stars will be created later on after all of these uh, white and blue giants will basically explode and go supernova. But right here right in the middle of this region, this is sort of the most dense and the most massive uh, region of space in anywhere near us, basically, within about uh, several million light years, uh, with quite a lot of record-holding stars. And one of those stars is R136A1, which is the most massive star. Now let's jump to it, just so you can actually see what it looks like. And this is essentially it. It's ridiculously massive. It's over 300 masses of the sun. And uh, it actually has several partners um, because it is a, a multi-star system. And its partners are also record holders, basically like second and third place for the most massive stars. So altogether, this uh, particular region um, is equivalent to several thousand masses of the sun. Um, and stars here are extremely densely uh, populated. Basically, the distance between these stars is absolutely minimal, so it doesn't really take very far or very long to reach the next star. And so, um, you could potentially place a planet between these stars, and it could potentially become habitable. So this is actually what I wanted to discover in this video today. I wanted to basically recreate a small part of this region right here in Universe Sandbox, that you see right here. So this is just a small part of it. Every star here is uh, basically just maybe under one light year away from each other. So let's just see how far away I've placed them. So yeah, this is maybe um, anywhere from 0.5 to about one light year away. So this is quite realistic. And right in the middle of, of all of this, I decided to place a planet known as the rogue planet, the planet that has no parents, it has no star, it's all by itself. It's basically very Earth-like in terms of uh, its composition, it's also very Earth-like in terms of atmosphere and mass, although maybe a little bit more massive actually, it's uh, about 10% more massive. But most importantly, um, I made sure that this is a, a planet that is sort of flying by itself, it's not attached to anything, and I wanted to see um, what would happen to it with time as it flies through this region. And um, I've only placed it maybe five minutes ago and it already actually increased in temperature. As a matter of fact, you can see the temperature is going up quite dramatically. And I think that's because it's actually headed toward one of the stars maybe. Now let's actually see what happens to it. I wanna, I wanna really follow its progress as it flies through space here. And we're going to find out if its temperature increases, decreases or changes in any way and what actually happens to this star 
uh, in the next few in-game years. Now we're going to give this planet a few years to fly through the system and see if we can actually make it habitable or if it actually overheats and basically kills everything on the surface. But I also wanted to see if any of these stars actually do go supernova before then. Uh, and if they do, then they'll probably initiate uh, a very interesting chain reaction or at least um, push the other stars around quite a lot. So this star is actually increasing in speed. It's already moving at five kilometers per second. And I think all of these stars are also attracting each other. So all of them are slowly moving faster and faster, faster and faster toward um, each other. But my goal in this video was to basically see what happens to objects located in between these stars. Because um, if you really look at this region, it's so bright and so densely populated that you'd expect there to be quite a lot of energy in the middle. And all of this other stuff is basically uh, gas and various star material that was expelled by these stars throughout the ages and is now illuminated by the energy from these stars. All right, so uh, let's run the simulation a little bit faster and basically just observe the conditions on this planet. So right now it's still relatively cold. It's about minus 139 degrees Celsius, which is actually colder than Mars. Um, it's way colder than any conditions on Earth as well. So it's basically just a planet filled with ice. Um, it's been about 70 years now. It's slowly flying toward one of the stars here. And uh, so far, nothing really changed. And even 400 years later, the temperature is pretty much still the same. So despite all of this energy here, despite all of this radiation, and despite all of this tremendous amount of power, it seems that um, any object in between these stars would still be really dark and really cold, just like this rogue planet. We're still gonna wait and see how long it takes for it to actually get anywhere. Um, because I think at this point, oh, there we go. It's actually moving a little bit faster now. At this point, all of these objects actually start moving and um, some of them might end up colliding with each other. But at the same time, I think my rogue planet is approaching one of the stars, at least getting a little bit closer to it. And you can see the temperature increased by like one degree because it moved a little bit closer. Um, the parameter that we really need to be aware of is this right here, the radiative power. That's basically how much energy it's receiving from all of these stars nearby. And you can see that it took us 55,000 years to increase the temperature by about 7 degrees Celsius. That is actually a lot more intense than I thought. So let's just maybe keep waiting and uh, let's see how long it takes to get to maybe the melting temperature of water, which is zero degrees Celsius. And what's interesting is that I think uh, before this planet actually becomes terraformed, two of these stars or possibly even several of the stars will collide and most likely create a supernova. So it will not be very long before these stars actually end up destroying everything here. And because the distance is actually um, relatively close, this planet will probably not survive any of the supernova. All right, so there's actually a star right here somewhere, relatively close to us. And because of that star, the radiative power suddenly went up dramatically. Let's actually maybe slow down time a little bit. And also the temperature dropped by about 30 degrees Celsius. Um, the distance to this particular star, I think we can actually see it right here somewhere. And it's actually right here. It's about 14.7 thousand uh, astronomical units or about 0.2 light years. So at this distance, even though it's so far away, this planet is actually getting um, just as much radiation, just as much um, heat as I think Pluto does. I think this is about the same as Pluto, or possibly even more than Pluto. And just a few more thousand years later, the temperature is now actually jumping quite dramatically. We're now at minus 30, minus 20, minus 10. And look at that, we're at melting uh, temperature of water uh, degrees. So we're basically over zero degrees. So here we will now have habitable conditions. The water will become liquid. We'll probably also get atmosphere and clouds and stuff. 
but yeah, you can see the water is actually liquid now. Uh, but the thing is, it's very, very dark here because um, despite all of this heat, we're quite far away from the nearest star. We're not actually getting much radiation from it. So the nearest star here is about four and a half thousand AU away from uh, the rock planet. And it looks like it's the star that's actually headed toward us. And so there's a very big chance that our planet is going to experience quite a dramatic shift of temperature in the next few uh, hundreds of years. And look at that. So now we're basically at Earth conditions, but it's suddenly getting warmer and warmer and warmer. And just like that, it's back to being cold again. Wow, this is crazy. This is actually really, really awesome. So this suggests that if there are any rogue planets orbiting between these stars in the uh, Large Magellanic Cloud, this is probably what's happening to them. These planets might be actually experiencing these crazy, crazy conditions. And if you look at this from a distance, you'll notice that uh, these stars are just gently orbiting around one another. They're kind of just dancing around uh, each other's orbits. They're not really colliding just yet. Um, and because they're all so massive, even a single collision will cause a tremendous supernova. So we're going to wait until that happens and see what happens to the planet. But for now, though, if I look at this planet, you'll see that it's back to being really cold because now it moved away from one of those stars. All right, so let's wait for the supernova. Let's just kind of uh, zoom out of here and see what happens if, well, not if, more like when the supernova occurs. I'm expecting a collision any time now. But it's actually very beautiful to see these stars move in such a unique and very beautiful way. And it looks like our ice planet, our rogue planet, is actually moving away from this region and is slowly departing all of this madness. Now, this means that it's not going to get warm, but it still has a high chance of being destroyed by the supernova, if and when it occurs. Oh my god, this is crazy. I totally almost missed this. So it looks like we actually have approached one of the stars too close. And because we did that, our temperature has now jumped to 900 degrees Celsius. This is at a distance of 274 AU. So that means that if any of the objects, any of the planets pass through uh, this region right here, relatively close to one of the stars, Basically, this is what you would get. The planet would suddenly become super hot, super molten, and most likely lose all of the water and atmosphere. And it looks like the temperature is actually still increasing. It's going to 900. Yeah, it was almost 900 degrees Celsius. And it's now dropping again. That's very, very interesting and definitely not something I expected from the simulation. All right, so it's been about 206,000 years since I started the simulation. Uh, all of these stars are still kind of relatively stable. They haven't really exploded. None of them collided, and a lot of them seem to be just kind of dancing around each other. Uh, the planet is back to being cold, and or at least uh, not as hot as it used to be. But that, yeah, the temperature is definitely dropping. And it looks like that for the next few thousand years, it's going to be in negatives again. So it's going to become an ice planet just uh, one more time. And at this point, I'm just going to be waiting for the supernova, if it ever actually occurs. Uh, it seems that um, without even trying, I created this very interesting, very stable, very, very beautiful system where these super massive stars are just dancing around one another. None of them is colliding. None of them are causing any trouble. And that's because the distance between them is relatively large. It's at least 0.2 up to about one light year. And um, for the most part, that's far enough for them to have stable, very interesting orbits around one another. So this is kind of what R136 really looks like, except of course the orbits are a lot more uh, unpredictable and a lot more different. And uh, the rogue planet is actually orbiting around this region. So that means that it's going to be approaching one of the stars again and getting even hotter one more time. And so it seems that I've actually surprisingly created a very stable system. It's been almost uh, 350,000 years now. 
nothing is exploding, nothing is colliding. The planet is actually orbiting around this region and it's going in between super cold to super hot. So if there are rogue planets in this particular system in real life, that is probably what they're experiencing as well. But nevertheless, I do want to create a supernova. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to manually initiate one. We're going to slow down time and imagine that maybe just maybe one of these stars lives out its life and finally explodes. It's going to be just a random star somewhere over there. And there is that supernova. So let's see what happens to the rogue planet. And let's actually see what happens to other stars as well as this particular supernova expands and pushes out all of the objects from here. So right now, this is four months per second. And this is about 380,000 years after the initial start. And there's a big chance right now that the planet will actually start burning because this is really, really close to the supernova. It was maybe a few light years away but it's close enough to cause some serious damage. Now let's see if it happens. It's coming up any second now. And it looks like the planet survived. So um, the actual supernova wave definitely stripped the planet of its atmosphere and it's most likely destroyed any kind of uh, signs of water, whatever else was left here that was basically volatile. But at the same time, the crust and the actual planet itself seem to be fine. It looks like I was uh, definitely underestimating this planet's ability to survive. It's still definitely kicking. Well, that's really awesome, but also quite realistic, specifically of the future of this particular region. So once the first star goes supernova, a lot of them will actually follow and this right here is going to become one of the brightest regions um, in the night sky for a very, very long time. As a matter of fact, when these stars go supernova, it's going to be quite a spectacular sight. And hopefully we're still around to record it and to basically uh, somehow study it. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. And I wanted to show you what the region of space known as R136 looks like and what would actually happen to a planet sort of stuck in between those stars. Hopefully you learned something from this video and you enjoyed watching it. And if you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe and share this with someone who enjoys watching space videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out and as always, bye bye.